another addition to the board game classroom. Filling time. Sometimes that needs to be done in the classroom. We might get done with something early, or students might need to have something to do, or we just might have a day where something's not cooperating and we have a little bit of extra time. And sometimes we can use games to fill in that extra time. They might have work to do, we get that work done, uh, but there are times when we need to have a little bit of extra things and a little bit of fun. And one of the games that is really fun for the students to play is Machi Koro, by, published by IDW Pandasaurus Games. It's a whole lot of fun to play. It goes quick. I can get four students to a game going at once. This time I'm going to take a look at Machi Koro with the Harbor expansion. In Machi Koro, the students are going to be taking the role of a mayor of a town and they have to get busy really quickly or the people living in town won't be happy. They have to give what the people want. The people are going to want a fun, interesting town where they can live and work and have everything they need. You don't have much to start with. All you're going to begin the game with is a wheat field and a bakery. Thankfully, those two go hand to hand and your job is to grow that town. And you're going to do it with a die and everyone starting amounts. And you're going to get the things your town needs. Now, in the harbor expansion, you have six things you need to achieve. A radio tower, a harbor, an airport, an amusement park, a train station, and a shopping mall. Get those things and the game will be yours. Now, in the harbor expansion, there is a little bit different setup than the With base the game. harbor expansion, you're going to make a single draw deck of all of the um, non-starting established and major establishments found in Machi, Machi Koro and the harbor expansion. Make a single draw deck. And we're going to draw cards from that deck to form a face-up line of establishments to create a marketplace. And we want to get 10 different marketplaces going on that. And we'll keep doing this until we get 10 different marketplaces. And you can see some of them will pile up depending on how well I actually shuffle this. So let's see what we get here. I'm not going to finish this all up now. But you go like this until you get your 10 different establishments set. Getting there, but I have a long way to go. And once you get your 10 establishments set, you're just about ready to play the game. Now, at any time when all you're down from 10 established to 9, then you're going to re-up draw cards till you get back to that 10th establishment, however that works. Now, it should be noted that if this draw deck runs out, then that's it for the game. There's no more, gonna, there's no more that are going to come out in the game. Other than that... There's a few different things that happen, the cards, but other than that, it is pretty much the same as the rest of the game. Just the marketplace setup is a little bit different. Now the game goes pretty much like the last time. Now to begin a turn, a player rolls the dice. To start the game, you roll a single die. Um, now once you get that train station belt, you'll be able to roll another die. Um, and then you are adding them together. So getting that train station belt allows you bigger establishments that you couldn't get with a single die. Now you're gonna earn income based on the establishments um, that you roll. So if you have a blue establishment, like say this macro bolt, you get the income from the bank during anybody's turn when that gets rolled. If you have a green establishment like this convenience store here, you get income from the bank during your turn, turn only. So if you only during your turn, when you roll a four. On a red establishment, you get to take coins from the person who rolled the die. So if you have, if you have the red establishment and someone rolls a three, you get to take income from them. And if you have a purple establishment, you get income from all the other players, but during your turn only. Now, with your establishments, it's possible that multiple establishments are activated at the same die roll. For example, there's two fours here on the table. They're activated in a certain order though. Red first, 
secondary green and blue, and then major ones, purple. So it's important to note that. Effects get multiplied if you have multiple of single establishments. So that's pretty interesting too. Now, if you owe another player money and cannot afford it, you pay what you can and the rest is forgiven. You can't do anything else about it. Now, at the end of your turn, you are going to spend your money to purchase new establishments from the marketplace or maybe constructing the landmark. You need to get, remember, you need to get six of these to win the game. So you're going to need to be able to achieve all those landmarks and get it. And each of those landmarks lets you do different things. So you have to really think about what the landmark's going to do for you and when you're going to do it. And also what cards combo well together when you're purchasing for your marketplace to plan out your strategy. Machi Koro is a quick playing game. We can get it done in half an hour and it's good. Students have fun. You get to establish your talent. You get to grow your game pretty quickly and then you get to build a town out of cards and that's a lot of fun. Just getting that town built is really rewarding, satisfying. The quickness of the game is very helpful and the harbor expansion on top of that gives this game a little bit more variety and a little bit more challenge. So even if I have students who haven't played just the base set of Machi Koro, I just leave the harbor expansion in. It's easier than trying to keep everything separated and they play just fine with all the cards and all the money. So thank you for watching another edition of the Board Game Classroom. Have a great day gaming.